Good evening. The sun has set and the Chicago Knights come alive. It's time for mystery, intrigue, and just a bit of strangeness as Hexaco Motor Oils presents the Hexaco Mystery Radio Hour, sponsored by Hexaco. I'm Silver Sterling, and join me as we bring you tales from these dark streets and darker alleys in Gun for Hire. Just because a law says you can't do something doesn't mean everyone is going to obey. A quick glance at all the underground speakeasies here in Chicago will show you that real quick. People want to get together with a little social lubrication, or truth serum, or if you want to use a technical term, alcohol, and then unwind a little bit. Of course, then they drink too much, get wound up, and do things which makes laws like prohibition come around. Sun goes up, sun goes down. And right now, the sun is down and our trio is headed to a speakeasy known as the Bellyache. Apparently, the dearly departed Leo Helsberg and his side gal, Trixie, went there a lot. Speaking of Trixie, the gang is trying to find her before she ends up like Leo. Here's hoping. I know a lot of schmucks who either can't get a job or hate the one they got. Me, personally, I think I got the best job in the world. I work at a place where everyone who's here wants to be here. They want to have a good time, and I'm the one helping them on their way. Plus, I get paid under the table, so Uncle Sam keeps his choppers out of my backside. You see, I tend bar at a speakeasy here in Chicago. Joe's and Jane's come in every night, except Sunday, looking for a little ring-a-ding-ding. And whether they ask for your average rot gut or have a high-end Mary Pickford or Gin Ricky, I'm the one who serves it up. Here you go, miss. Thank you. What else makes this the best gig? Well, take a look around, Pally. You got gangsters in their malls in one corner, some grifters in another, your hardballed toughs over there just waiting for a fight. And right there, well, that's where all the butter and eggs are, all the money. Oh, and that small section there? Those are all the coppers on the take. Even the blue likes to tip one back. Hell, half of them are Irish, so what'd you expect? On top of that, you should hear some of the canaries they get down here. Voices of angels, all of them. And don't even get me started on the music, Pally. Best you'll hear anywhere in Chi-Town. Above or below the bricks. It's a real clam bake. The topper to all this is that once all these pips have had a few, their tongues get looser. That's when you start to hear the real stories. I'm not talking the dime a dozen tales of the married, rich, lonely lookers trying to find someone to make a mistake with. Nah, I'm talking the stories that don't seem real, but are. Now, I ain't no snitch, but there was this one Joe in here the other night. Said he was part of a special group. A group that was going to shake things up, make the Windy City even breezier. And it wasn't Capone's outfit either. He said a bunch of dames were in charge of this group, and that he and the other Joes were the muscle. Like I always do, I just played along and nodded, keeps him talking. And he kept talking all right. Launches into this whole mess about something called the Thin One. Said that the bread lines were its fault. Not his. Not hers. It's. Kept saying the Thin One was going to eat us all like a Sunday brunch. I was, um... I was about to cut him off. It sounded like the gin was winning. But he held up his hands, then, without a word, he ripped his button down open, and I saw... the marks. I thought they were scratches at first, but as I looked closer, I realized it was a tattoo. Weirdest damn tattoo I ever seen. The lines made shadows on his ribs and gut, making him look almost like skin and bones. I, I couldn't stop looking at it. Then he said something, and I looked up at his mug. His face had those ink lines all over it, covering every inch. And I know what you're thinking. I was drunk and it was dark. Well, I'll tell you, Pally, neither is true, and I'd be happy to give you a close-up view of the pavement if you don't believe me. Anyway, those lines, they moved on his face like waves. Made his mug look just as thin as his chest. He said something again. I couldn't tell you what. 
I blinked and the lines were gone, like they were never there. His shirt was buttoned and he just smiled at me, the kind of smile that makes you want to leave a room. But instead of me leaving, he did, and just turned and walked away. <laughs> Is me telling you a story when it should be the other way around, right? Let's fix that. What can I get you, pal? Okay, I'm not the, the sharpest one, but today's Thursday, right? That's what uh -huh. I was just thinking. It's like, we've got a couple of days to figure out what we're doing for the Saturday. And the police are probably going to let her know today? Probably. If the brother-in-law doesn't get there first. Sounds right. Depends on how quick they are to get down there. But I think we, we stay with the Saturday meeting. Gives us time to go check out the... What did you say the name of that place was? We can go see Bertrice at the Bellyache. Hopefully she's there. Bertrice? Beatrice? Oh. Tr Trixie. Yes, yes, yes. Bam Bam's making up names. You gotta forgive him. <laughs> what about the, uh, the, the, the nest was the other one mentioned? We've been there. Oh, you have? Okay. Uh, wasn't he with us? You should, uh, look up a girl named Candy if you're there. Okay, well, we could go tonight. I mean, it's still light out. You got time. Well, Might as well get out there now before the word the gets out. sitting around here, so let's go. Bam Bam opens the door and motions everybody through it. Grab coat and follow. Put the coffee away. Yeah, put glug, that back. Glug, 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 glug. Head out into the night towards Vinny's Deli and the speakeasy known as the Belly Ache. Make me a common knowledge roll at a minus two. Uh, you'll have to subtract two from that, Chris. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I can. That's that's uh, subtracting two from a sixteen. It might equal a success. Oh, I was so close. You were. Mine's a three. Three. All right. And Grace also got a three. All right. Well, um, that's uh, quite all right because uh, uh, Bam Bam uh, absolutely knows what's going on. As you hop a cab to head out towards Marquette Park, stop about three blocks away and bam bam you just kind of lead them you like you, you you essentially say hold on there's something we got to do here first and you just instinctively know like where to go and who to seek out to get the password of the day for the speakeasy here um to know exactly what it is you need to say to get in which you do easily and you get to Vinny's, you walk in, and uh, it's late Late in the evening. The door is unlocked. The sign outside the deli or in the, that hangs in the window that would normally say open um, is not glowing, but the, but the regular paper sign hanging in the door says open, uh, which you underst understand is a clue um, that you can get into the deli and uh, make your way down to the speakeasy. So you walk inside. There's a uh, young, probably late teens guy behind the deli counter. And he just says to you, uh, we're closed. And you rattle off the passphrase to uh, get yourself access. And he just looks and he says, back through that way. And the three of you make your way through the deli 
part a curtain and find yourself kind of in the back office living area employee bathroom area and you head deeper in and then turn go down into the basement of the uh, of the deli and you get to a wall in the basement and there's another uh, door there you tap on the door a few times metal eye slit pops open a pair of eyes staring right back at you bam bam and you just say the passphrase once again it shuts quickly you hear the several locks clicking and metal bars sliding as the door opens up and you are waved into the belly ache. And very much like the picture I've got laying out here, it's kind of almost a, it looks like part subway tunnel, part um, sub basement sort of thing. It has arched uh, roof and little alcoves with uh, tables and chairs set up in there. There's a number of people in here right now. And there's uh, some music playing in here as well. Everyone seems to be having a good time. There is a bar across the way. It feels congested in a certain sense, but it also feels pretty festive uh, here as well. And everyone seems to kind of uh, be minding their own business. A haze of smoke rests, you know, in that space between the floor and the ceiling um, as you make your way through and deeper into the, uh, the speakeasy. What would you like to do? Beetle would kill me if he knew I was in here. Calm down. Oh, I ain't worried about Beetle. I just, he would kill me if he knew I was in here. Irving's a little, uh, a little bit wide eyed, you know, just, but trying to keep his cool. He's not been here before. There's not many places uh, in his area that he doesn't know about. Yeah, this is definitely a new place for both Grace and Irving. Bam Bam, you have vague memories from when you were here before prison. It looks roughly the same. More things change more they stay the same. Hey, Irving, uh, go easy on the gin. Uh, you don't have to worry about me. He must, otherwise he wouldn't have said anything. I am heartbroken. Think that of me. All right. So do we know what this Trixie looks like? I don't believe you were given a description. If you were given a description, it probably would have been in the vaguest of terms, at least as far as uh, hair color. So we're looking for a young lady that's having an affair with a dead brother. And I think that narrows it down to about every woman here. <laughs> well, probably true. Why don't I uh, just kind of find a seat and see if I can hear anything interesting that might help find, help find her. You can uh, do your much bigger things. Tommy is going to scan the room looking for the bouncer on duty, the, the troubleshooter working tonight and try to make eye contact with him. Make me a notice roll. All right, your 11 tells you quite a bit. Uh, there's actually, you make out, there's the one obvious bouncer at the door when you came in. There is another bouncer uh, over another obvious bouncer over by the bar as well where the drinks are being served and both of them make eye contact with you as you you know as you're just kind of trying to you know fly casual throughout the room or throughout the space but you also are able to pinpoint where there's probably at least two others who are functioning as security here as well but they are mixed in with the crowd and just kind of playing it low key as far as that goes. And they also make brief eye contact with you. Um, and they do their best to play it off as, you know, being the casual type, but you've you've run enough in these types of circles that you know, you know who they are. So I'm gonna make my way to one of the cool cats that's trying not to be seen. And I'm not going to confront them but I am going to move slightly past them so that my back is to them. And I'll be looking around away from them in the rest of the room, but I will say 
where they can hear me quiet night if i was looking for someone in particular would you have seen them all right and we'll get back to that here in one second grace um irving is gone or bam bam splits off from you irving splits off from you and goes and grabs a uh grabs a chair what are you doing a similar maneuver um are there serving girls and that kind of stuff here there's a couple they're doing their they're doing their best to try and keep up with the crowd but a lot of people are also just going straight up to the bar and getting their own with my vague knowledge of what trixie would might look like you know trying to scan and see if there's anybody there that remotely resembles who i think it should be are you doing this as you're kind of making your way through the space or are you finding some place to sit? Oh, you said similar move, right? So you're sitting or? Yeah, so I'm, I'll make my way towards the bar and be kind of looking more at the women in the group. Alrighty, uh, make me a notice check, Grace. And this is site based. And that would be plus two, so a seven. All right, so you go take up your position, looking around, Bam Bam positioned himself. Irving, you just went and sat straight down. Yeah, I'm going to go sit down and just kind of close my eyes and focus on listening to see if I can pick up uh, conversations around me. All right, uh, you may go ahead and also make your own notice check. I am going to actually, also Irving's going looking for buried secrets in this uh in this place as he's listening real close. He's done this a couple times to try and pick up leads uh, at the places he frequents. Do you want me to roll a bonus or do you just want me to add something to um, it? I'm going to... Or just maybe expand what he could find? Yeah. With a six. Six, all right. So here's what we'll, here's how we'll do this. We'll, we'll, let, we'll, we'll go in reverse order now to resolve all these things. Um, all right, so you you sit down, you just kind of uh, kick back a little bit, and like you said, close your eyes and just start to absorb some of the sounds and speeches around you. You start hearing snippets and bits of conversation, and you 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 kind of trained yourself to eliminate ones that don't matter. Kind of come to there's 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 two that at least two that catch your catch your attention in in relation to what it is that you're doing and and one of them has to do with somebody saying something about the alley cat killer that they heard that when it's when it struck again recently that it killed uh, a news photographer or newspaper photographer and that the rumor is that there are pictures of the killer on the camera but the camera apparently has gone missing. And the rumor that they kind of espouse is that uh, somebody broke into the uh, police department or the precinct office and stole the camera. The voices then start to go and conjecture on who it might be. Um, was it Capone's outfit? Was it somebody in, um, you know, one of the other rival gangs, whatnot? And that one just kind of trails off a little bit. The second one, um, you hear somebody mention something about the Three Spires Country Club and that there's a group of the socialite wives, ladies that are there, that there was some sort of um, special party going on at the country club late night, um, a few nights back somebody heard something to the effect that something bad might have happened there they don't know exactly the details but the conjecture immediately goes into maybe somebody was murdered um, maybe somebody had had an affair maybe it wasn't really a meeting maybe it was something really illicit like maybe there was something uh, the, the the women were planning either against their husbands or something there's a number of different things that kind of come out of there in regards to that. We'll also say just for future reference that you pick up two other leads, but we won't detail what those are right now. Um, so make a note that uh, you've got two other leads for something down the line. So Grace, you're looking around, you check out the two serving girls that are there. Neither one of them matches the description. One might be close, but 
your instincts are telling you it probably isn't her. Uh, one thing you do notice, though, as you are looking around, there is, and you didn't quite see it at first, but until you moved a little bit, you see a um, door kind of off the side and behind a curtain uh, in the bar area. And you just caught a glimpse of, you may have seen a person move across uh, the doorway that was there. You're about to position yourself to try and get a better look. And suddenly there is this person in front of you. It's a man, he's a very broad shouldered. He's got a nice cut suit on and um, his face is very squarish and hair is just slicked back. And he has, there's streaks of gray um, along the sides and the top. He comes up to you and he's got this strange mix of uh, cigarette smoke, cologne, and alcohol. And he has two drinks in his hand and he kind of puts one right in your field of vision. And he's like, well, good evening. I see that you don't have a drink. Uh, we should probably remedy that situation, shouldn't we? A little distracted, I kind of look at him go, with the look of, are you talking to me? Kind of a look but I don't say anything right away. And he stands there, he says, trust me, it's uh, it does have a bite, but uh, it's a bite you don't mind getting. Let's just put it that way. My name is Frederick. No, no, this is for you. Being totally clueless, um, I'm not thirsty, thank you. Frederick, you said your name was? I did, he takes a sip of, uh, of his. all due respect miss he looks around and most people don't come to a speakeasy if they're not thirsty look i'm not necessarily very good at this and i'm also here by myself at the moment so uh why not uh share a drink in a few words is there anything about him that might make me think that he would know anything about who i'm looking for um right at this point no it's on the house or i should say really it's more on me he continues to like hold the drink right in front of you that's right it'll be on you if you keep this up big smile goes across his face there we go that's much better look he, he steps back slightly i just uh, kind of feel bad you didn't have a drink and i wanted to make sure you know you got something that's relatively good is there anything about him that would tell me that i would know him from somewhere make me a common knowledge roll he, as you begin to study him a bit more, he has some vague familiarity, but you cannot place it. You do recognize him. You're sure that you've seen him at some point. When and where you're having trouble placing right now. You don't know if it's because of the cigarette haze or if it's because of the fact that um, you're focused more on the trying to find Trixie, um, but something about him looks familiar. I gently and slowly take a second glass if it's still being held out. It absolutely and is. And just kind of kind of nod at him and uh, take a sip. Since I kind of think I know him from somewhere. See? Now that wasn't so hard, was it? Hard's got nothing to do with it. As you take a sip, you the 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 gin is strong. Well, heart has everything to do with these drinks, I'll tell you that much. You weren't kidding. Woo! Exactly, exactly. I, I didn't uh, I didn't get your name yet. I haven't given it yet. That's true. But by all means, please go ahead. Oh, I want a good alias. <laughs> You, I, I have no doubt that Grace has an alias in her mind that she uses for situations like this. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So I, I like using Bonnie. I'll just give him the first name Bonnie. So, Bonnie. Bonnie, like, um, he looks around. Clyde is not here with you then tonight? Kind of laugh and smile at him. Don't respond. So, uh, tell me, Bonnie. What um, what brings you uh, what brings you here on your own? 
Now, I never said I was alone, but I'm trying to find someone. Oh, well, all right. And who, um, who are we looking for? Maybe I could help. Grace is going to blush terribly as she realizes the way that what she said came off. She's like, no, um, I just wonder if you come here often because I don't, as you can probably tell, and you might know the clientele a little better than myself. Actually, I uh, do try and get down here as often as I can. I've never been a fan of the uh, current legislation, and I'm very happy to see that's going to be going away here in a couple of weeks. Uh, and I'm kind of going to miss the uh, miss the belly ache, although. I won't miss how it makes me feel sometimes. Sometimes he looks over at the bartender and he gives a head nod. He goes, sometimes Vinny makes the batches a bit, uh, a little bit too rough. You know what I mean? Yeah, I am. I do come here often and I, I, I might be able to, I might, you know, be able to help you out in that respect. So you're looking for a regular then? Possibly. I'm looking for a young woman uh, by the name of, Beatrice O'Hara? Yeah. And are, and are you expect her to be here tonight? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And she might also, or she goes by a name that you might know her, Trixie. Trixie. It's funny you should say that. I do know a Trixie at, uh, have you ever been to the nest? Yes, I have. You have? Oh. I um I get there I go there every once in a while as well. Uh, Trixie is uh, she's one of the performers at the um, at the nest. She's very talented, very talented. But you know, and it's funny you should. It's funny that you say that because I want to say earlier I thought I saw somebody who I thought might have been her here. I was pretty sure it wasn't her, unless unless she just wasn't looking her best. How do you mean? He uh, takes another sip of the of the gin. Well, first of all, is she in some kind of trouble or? Don't know yet. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, she came in with a um, another gentleman, and uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. They came in, talked to Vinny a bit, and you well. Know, he points back towards the curtain. I want to say they may have gone back there, but, you know, I got distracted. There was a lot going on here earlier, and I took my eyes off it. It was only of passing interest, really, to me. So I wasn't sure if they went back there or if they left the place, to be honest with you. The only reason I even paid much attention to it in the first place was because she came in, and I thought, boy, she really looks like Trixie. And then I kind of dismissed it. Hair was all down and dirty. She had a longer coat on, which I was guessing was probably not hers. I didn't recognize the palook that was with her, that's for sure. He seemed a little concerned about her. Maybe it was her brother. I don't know. So this room that they might have gone into, um, what kind of stuff goes on back there? Uh, you know, for as many times as I've been here, I don't know. I've never gone back there, to be honest with you. You know, sometimes rooms like that, dark rooms, dark deeds, you know what I mean? Yeah. He reaches into his breast pocket and pulls out a, uh, a pack of cigarettes, flicks one out in a very uh, suave move uh, towards you. You smoke? No, I don't. All the more for me. And he just pops it in his lips and then casually lights uh, lights it. So enough about who you're looking for. Let's uh, let's talk more about you. And we'll switch over to Bam Bam here. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'll I'll give you actually I'm going to give you a Benny for that grace just because of the whole do you come here often and then the blushing <laughs> that followed and then the explanation that was pretty good. Um, all right, Bam Bam. So what was it that you um what was it that you muttered to the uh, 
the the guy. If I was looking for someone in particular, would you have seen them? You hear a slight kind of squeak uh, of his chair as he adjusts it. I don't know. All depends on uh, who's doing the looking. Well, let's just say you've got a pair that came in here. Might just be a one of them flying solo that could bring some heat that you don't want to this establishment before it goes legit. How might uh, how might you know this to be uh, uh, how might you know this to be the truth? Because I've seen fresh corpses tonight. Look, pal, we don't want uh, no trouble from the cops. We don't want no trouble from the outfit. We don't want no trouble from no one. We're all just here having a good time. I appreciate that and know that I am here to try to help things go as smoothly as possible. So this pair, one uh, Trixie comes in with a gent named Hellsberg. Hmm. Well, I saw a couple come in earlier. Yeah, well, she looked like she could have been a Trixie. Her hair was a mess. She had a big on, she had on a big coat. The guy that was with her, he just looked like a nervous wreck. Sounds like the pair. All right. Yeah, I know where they are. Who's after him? Do I need to know? Well, if I get to him before the people that are after them, then they'll still be breathing by the time I get done. Oh, look at you being all white knight. How nice of you. I'm a gentleman, usually. Yeah, all right. Yeah, they're in the back room. He, at this point, you hear his chair kind of scrape and he stands up and he is just inches from you, not facing you directly, but off to the side. They're in the back room behind the bar. I'll go talk to Vinny, see if we can get it opened up for you. Appreciate that. Hey, uh, those two, uh, those two people you came with, came in with, they with you? They are. Hopefully they're not sticking out too bad. Nah, that one guy over there, he looks like he's minding his own business, although it looks like she's about to mind his business. And then, uh, it looks like somebody's putting the moves on your girl. They better be careful. She's got moves of her own. All right. Slug in my chest as she does. Oh. Sounds like a bad pickup line on your part, buddy. Usually a gentleman. Not always. As you said, stay right here. And you see him make his way over uh, to the bar to go and talk to the bald-headed gentleman behind the bar. Irving, you are, um, you're picking up the last bits of, uh, your conversation, your eyes flick open as you feel the presence of someone, uh, kind of leaning down and they flick open. And one of the serving girls is essentially right in your face. And she says, Hey sugar, this isn't a place where you can come and sleep. All right. You hear what kind of drink can I get for you? Uh, what do you recommend? Well, they both uh, are probably going to end up causing you some problems later on. So you either got uh, gin from a couple nights ago, the fresh batch, or if you really want to spend something, we got a little bit of the whiskey for you. I'll go with the gin. Which one, from a couple nights back or the fresh batch? The fresh batch. All right. Man likes to live dangerously. I like that. And uh, she holds it, uh, 25 cents, please, mister. I will place it in her palm. It's very kind of you. You hear all by yourself? That's pretty basically about uh, nine-tenths of all these gents here. <laughs> well, so you, on nights like this, you got to go somewhere. Well, that's true. That's very true. Right, the gin. Yeah, I'll go get that right now for you. Great. Be right back. <laughs> Can't take you two anywhere. 
<laughs> uh, Bam Bam, you get a an indication from the guy that he uh, he basically kind of uh, gives you a little head twitch to come on over to the bar. And then he makes, you see his eyes flick between uh, Irving and Grace and the gentleman that Grace is talking to. I'm going to, as I walk to the bar, try to make eye contact with Grace and Irving and do the little eye shuffle to let them know that, hey, this way. And I'll get up to the bar to talk to Vinny. Grace, make a notice check. Let's see if you pick this up. Irving, you obviously did. As I'm waiting for it, so <laughs> that works out. So Grace, you see you see Bam Bam go up to the bar and he's standing next to another kind of larger gentleman and he yeah, he gives you that uh, that cue and your eyes flick over and you see Irving also starting to get up from his uh, table that he was sitting at to make his move over there. And then your eyes go back to Frederick and he's, he says, so we were, then we were driving um, down the highway. We were coming from uh, Milwaukee. Of course, we, you know, we had just uh, picked up everything that we needed from there. It was, uh, I don't know why my brother wanted to get that type of cheese, but he insisted that it was, you know, he needed to get it from Wisconsin and he was going to do something. Well, they, they, they do say that the best cheese and, and you know that yeah, you sound exactly like he did when he said that. And I tell you what, this has been an enjoyable few minutes of the evening. But uh, I uh, need to head up to the bar. Well, uh, then you know, let me uh, let me come with you. I'll, I'm more than happy to buy another drink. That, that's that's not necessary. But uh, thank you for the one that well, you brought me. Well, maybe. Um, uh, Bonnie, maybe, maybe I. No, could... seriously, Frederick. Frederick, no. <laughs> but I thought I could just maybe call you or see you later here, maybe, perhaps, maybe a call. I could call you and. You can call me whatever you want to, Frederick. Um, I need to go to the bar. Uh, Alone. Uh, um, uh, all right. Oh wait, 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 wait! Can I? Can Irving overhear this? Well, I'm not being quiet about it, so it's quite possible as you're walking up to the bar, <laughs> you can hear this. Yeah. So, a- right. Absolutely. Irving's going to time it so that when he's walking by Grace to go where Tommy is, that it's at the same time she pulls away to do it, so it looks like he walks off with her, just to rub it in Frederick's face. <laughs> Irving, I've never been so happy to see you. His his eyes, as you as you turn away from him, Frederick's eyes, you can see that he's kind of going back and forth between the two of you, and he just looks very confused, and he looks down at his drink, um, and and kind of turns... Over my shoulder, I, sh- I kind of say loudly as I go back, well, I did tell you I didn't come alone. He looks back up. That's true. It kind of gives you a salute with his glass. And then you see him turn, turn away. And now. Clever communiques of contrivance shall commence to continue your comportment of contentment. One, two, here we go. It's the shirt of choice for the hardworking man and woman on the front lines of labor. Comfort and function all rolled into one. A signature look that's become a distinctive trademark for the trades worker. It's the Henley, and it's been worn well for decades. But the time has come to put a new spin on this old classic. And there's only one company that can do it right. Hensley Industries. Introducing the Hensley Henley. What makes the Hensley better than the original? Glad you asked, friend. The Hensley is crafted from the highest quality cotton, not only from the States, but also from overseas, giving it and you that exotic fashion savoir faire. If you need something more to make your skin sing, the Hensley is lined with fabric made through the use of the new patent science. 
This marvelous material makes magic, keeping you cool when it's hot and warm when winter whips. The Hensley needs to be the newest addition to your wardrobe. The Hensley will turn your world savage and set you on the course for adventure. Woven in factories in the exotic Southwest, the Hensley is North American made, but worldly wise, and it's unisex, perfect for the woman or man, it too. Rooted in the past, designed for the future, but available in the present, it's the newest addition to your wardrobe. It's the Hensley! Available in all sizes from 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Don't be a joker. Buy a Hensley. Today at all discerning FLCS, that's friendly local clothing stores. Well, sometimes there's wisdom in the phrase, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. But I'm thinking in this case, Grace Gunn, Tommy Bam Bam Prue, and Irving Holt are going to want to know, and they're going to want to pay attention. Of course, we need to find out what's behind that curtain first. But that's for next time. And that's enough for now. So shake a leg till next time. But just so we're clear, the part of Grace Gunn was played by Jill Rich, Irving Holt is played by Brad Smith, Tommy Bam Bam Prue is played by Brent Rich, and the boss in charge of this clip joint is Chris Hussey. Special thanks to John from the Tale of the Manticore podcast and Scott R. Nelson for lending their golden cords to this episode. I'm E.I. Wick, and remember, taking a wooden nickel is less trouble than a ghost rock dime. Hexaco Motor Oils thanks you once again for listening to the Hexaco Mystery Radio Hour, sponsored by Hexaco. This game references the Savage Worlds game system, available from Pinnacle Entertainment Group at PEGINC.com. It is unofficial media content permitted under the Media Network Content Agreement. This content is not managed, approved, or endorsed by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Certain portions of the materials used are the intellectual property of Pinnacle and all rights are reserved. Savage Worlds, all related settings and unique characters, locations, logos, and trademarks are copyrights of Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Thanks also to Fear the Boot. Support their Patreon at patreon.com slash feartheboot. Bring a little light to our dark shadows by leaving a five-star review on the podcatcher of your choice. When doing so, please search for Fear the Boot Actual Play. If you listen on YouTube, please like and comment. Of course, telling a friend is the best way to help the show. Not only is it the right thing to do, it's the Hexaco way. Hexaco reminds you to help keep your car running like magic and always use great Hexaco products. I'm Silver Sterling, and until next time, remember to keep one eye on the shadows. Irving's gonna walk back up. Okay. Does, does her place? Oh, never mind. Irving wouldn't take the elevator. Even had an elevator. Uh, yeah, That's right. Irving's That's gonna four floors. Gonna hobble his way back up the four floors. Yeah, but I'm only on the second. So that's got to help. And then he's going to hobble back down two floors to go to the correct one. <laughs> <laughs> got to get his steps in. That's right. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you a Benny for that. That was good. Okay.